So metabolic syndrome is a medical term for a combination of diabetes, high blood pressure, hypertension, and obesity. It puts you at greater risk of getting coronary heart disease as well, uh, including stroke and other conditions that affect the blood vessels. Are you, are you putting yourself at risk if you're not on testosterone replacement if you've got metabolic syndrome? We're going to discuss this with Dr. T, so keep watching. Hi, and welcome to Balance My Hormones, where we support men and women on their journey to optimal hormone balance. If you're new to the channel, please press like and subscribe so you don't miss future content. So today we're here with Dr. George Tuliatos, sometimes referred to as Dr. Testosterone or Dr. T. He's a TRT doctor based in Greece, and he's going to discuss with us, should patients with metabolic syndrome or diabetes um, be on TRT? Basically, uh, are they at risk by not being on testosterone replacement? And will testosterone replacement help them with metabolic syndrome? Hi, Dr. T. Well, uh, we know that hypogonadism is linked with metabolic syndrome because the lower the testosterone, the more the miserable fat that it leads to insulin resistance, okay? And diabetes, of course, type 2. And by the way, we know also know that um, type, type 2 diabetic patients with low testosterone have more promising uh, the prognosis with uh, introducing testosterone because it will oxidize the visceral fat that will build some muscle tissue that will burn the glucose. So they improve, they improve the insulin sensitivity. Now, when somebody is, is out of shape, he's off, he's uh, insulin resistance, and he has metabolic syndrome, let's say, large midsection, okay, and dyslipidemia. Also, it's, uh, it's uh, the, the blood pressure, and what else? It's um, the insulin resistance. So if he has two out of the, of the four uh, criteria, okay, um, and uh, he's hypogonadic, then if he's introduced with testosterone, or even he increases his eugonadal testosterone levels, he will improve the dyslipidemia through the improvement in midsection out of burning the visceral fat, okay? So we know that testosterone reverses the dyslipidemia when it's based on uh, visceral fat, you know, that leads to insulin resistance, of course, and LDL increases, total uh, cholesterol increases, HDL lowers, of course, okay? Um, so there is a link between diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and low testosterone. And, and what have you seen with testosterone treatment then as far as the reversal of that in patients? And how long does it take? Well, A1C goes down, LDL goes down, um, perhaps CRP can go down if it's related to the inflammatory cytokines released out of uh, visceral fat. Um, now, uh, less visceral fat means higher HDL, and uh, perhaps some blood pressure lowering in case you don't abuse, of course, testosterone, because if you drop in body weight, you're going to lower your blood pressure, all right? So metabolic syndrome can be reversed through TRT when, the, when it's significant hypogonadism. High visceral fat leads to lower HDL? If you drop in weight, if you drop in weight, and actually on mental fat, your HDL goes up, your good cholesterol. Well, that's good, that's good to know. Uh, so things like cardio and, and dropping weight will, will make a, a bigger difference. Yes, and this is easier, of course, when you introduce testosterone because testosterone increases uh, fat oxidation, brings energy, you know. And the question is then, these diabetes specialists, i.e. endocrinologists, um, usually the, the last thing they want to prescribe is testosterone. And yet they're treating diabetes and maybe metabolic syndrome. What, what other things would, would they treat uh, metabolic syndrome with? They are wrong because Chrysler, John Chrysler said that in the, in the near future, diabetes type 2 assessment should be followed by HPDA assessment as well. And if it's low testosterone, by using, if it's low testosterone, by introducing testosterone, we're going to improve on insulin sensitivity. And type, type 2 diabetes can be completely reversed not type one, okay, type two, which is uh, based on lifestyle. You know, it's, it's, the, it's the pandemic of the 21st century and the Western type uh, diets, you know. So type two diabetes can be reversed with metformin, diet, proper uh, exercise, and testosterone 
replacement therapy. But, but again, at least in the UK, uh, maybe some other European you know, university hospital settings. Because they lack of knowledge, Michael. They lack of knowledge. So testosterone does two things. Builds muscle that sucks up glucose and burns glucose also. It improves also the uh, assimilation of glucose through the glute for receptors. And number two is oxidized visceral fat. That means higher insulin sensitivity. Do, do you think some of the side effects of TRT are overblown from uh, you know, certain healthcare professionals? Well, it depends, Michael, it depends on the dose. If you think 250 is a, which is, is, is a cruising for some uh, bodybuilders, you know, it's the off cycle. It's a TRT, it's wrong. No, it's super physiological. And in the long term may lead to uh, acne, genicomastia, edema, fluid retention, erythrocytosis, you know, benign prostatic hypertrophy. So you need to be optimized. Now, feeling jacked and uh, feeling strong is something different, you know. In my experience, I've realized that 200 milligrams, 90% of the men are super physiological. No matter how introduced this, let's say 1100, 1200. It doesn't matter the protocol, but I'm telling you as an amount, a weekly amount, 200 will surpass the, the 1000 the uh, nanogram, picograms, no? Doesn't matter if you use it every other day or once a week or twice a day. I mean, it's a large dose, okay? Now, if some people believe that should be 1,500, okay, with 1,500, you need more frequent uh, phlebotomies. Perhaps you need to introduce a little bit of uh, aromatase inhibitor, you know. It's up to the person, of course, but certainly it's above the ranges. The uh, packaged leaflets for uh, testosterone are usually 250 milligrams of testosterone, you know, every two or three weeks. So certainly during some point of that treatment. Yeah, but this is an archaic protocol, so old. Well, these are all fat. Certainly, but every three weeks, who uses it? It's actually every two weeks. If you're a trans man, you get to take it more frequently. It's what the, it's what the package leaflet says from Aspen. Uh, this is different. I, I'm not about, about the gender dysmorphia. Uh, so I, I suppose what I was referring to is, you know, if you were to look at the traditional package leaflet, they're giving you a full 250 in one go. So obviously it's going to peak and it'll probably peak for a week and probably much more super physiological than smaller doses. And then it's going to fall down to hardly anything at week two and week three. So this, this is how the NHS will, will normally do it if they choose certain esters like sustenone or testosterone and anthate. And I guess, well, but that's, that's the standard from the endocrinology departments or they'll put a patients on libido where they give them a thousand milligrams of testosterone and decanoate. Who says that libido works? Nibiru is, is, is something old fashioned, you know, that doesn't work. It creates more problems because when you introduce a thousand, one gram, a thousand milligrams, you, 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 you kick on erythrocytosis and, and aromatization. And uh, during the, the, the final two weeks before the, the next shot, you feel crappy because you're down very low levels, you know? The trough levels are significantly low. So, um, anyway, I, we don't have to go into too much of the details on, on that for this video, but um, you know, just basically, you know, we're talking about staying in more of a physiological or optimal physiological range, which is what the upper upper third of, of the range, uh, depending on when you measure, right? Because you get some cheeky patients that may, or just forgetful patients that may not get their blood test done on the trough, which is the lowest point, and I think that's what we've always measured the lowest point, because even with creams or gels, if you measure it too soon after application, you're going to get a slightly super physiological level. Um, I think that's just how what, what we've seen. But you don't want to always be at that super physiological level all the time. You care about the lowest. That's the best time to measure. Because you just, that's just how these things work. Any, any medication, if I were to take my thyroid medication and measure it two hours later, I'm going to be through the roof. But if I measure it at the end before the next, before the next dose, it's going to be normal. Or it should be normal. Okay. So I guess it's all about having the right balance, hence the, the name of our service and uh, kind of our ethos. And it's about um, you know, mitigating risk of metabolic syndrome through the use of testosterone. And why, you know, why wouldn't testosterone be used if obviously you know, patients are suffering from metabolic syndrome, which may coincide with having you know, low levels of testosterone along with all the symptoms that match with testosterone. Is that about right? Okay. All right. So um, that's our topic. Should you, uh, or is it? Are you? 
Are you putting yourself at risk if you have metabolic syndrome? Metabolic syndrome. Let me start again. Are you putting yourself at risk if you have metabolic syndrome and you're not on TRT? And that will depend on many factors, including uh, your actual diagnosis of hypogonadism, uh, along with your metabolic syndrome, which may include diabetes, coronary heart disease, uh, high blood pressure, or, wake, you know, or obesity, and, um, and then after a proper workup, you know, not having patients on testosterone may actually, would you say, put, put them at risk then? If, if they had all the other indicators to be on testosterone, and if their NHS GP didn't, or the endocrinologist didn't put them on testosterone, are they putting them at risk? George, you want the final word? If you are hypogonadal, certainly there's a problem. And actually, hypogonadal men will develop in the near future that body, MS, metabolic syndrome, and DM2. Now, if you have already metabolic syndrome and hypogonadism, <laughs> there's an atomic bomb, you know, and it's, it's clear connection that uh, testosterone will improve this. But testosterone, you know, can be used against obesity. It can be used against obesity. Exactly. And usually, obesity is a low T. You know? uh, you know, you may be putting yourself at risk if you have got all the symptoms of low testosterone and metabolic syndrome. It may be best to uh, have that investigated and, and treated, uh, according to Dr. George. So if you've experienced uh, low testosterone and metabolic syndrome, please let us know in the comments below. And uh, thanks again for watching. If you like the video, please press like. If you dislike the video, please let us know why in the comments. And uh, we'll see you next time.